Hi, this is Robert Petkoff, narrator of Cressley Cole's Immortals After Dark audiobook series. I think my favorite scene from Demon in the Dark, actually, I think my favorite scenes, there are two, are the following. One, toward the end when everyone is at Marraquetta's, awaiting word of their loved ones on the uh, island where they've all been kidnapped. It's a scene where a bunch of the different characters from previous books have come together into this room. And I really enjoyed that because it was, in a way, sort of like seeing old friends from the past, from books I've already narrated. And it's fun because I get to do all these different accents in one scene. Fun and challenging. You know, it's always a challenge to try to switch quickly between them and do it without stopping. My second favorite in it is when Malcolm opens up to Caro about what his past was, thinking he's going to drive her away from him by telling her all the ugly truths about his life, and instead he actually just brings her closer to him. The actor in me loves that because you get to act this emotional scene. And so for me, I get to sort of dive into Malcolm there and the drama of that. Here's an excerpt from one of my favorite scenes from the audiobook. I hope you enjoy it. By the time the vampire transported Caro and Ruby to Anduane and dropped them unceremoniously, his skin was fully aflame. While she and Ruby coughed from the smoke, he merely took the pain as his red eyes scanned a crowd of immortals. Naomi! he bellowed. The phantom gave a cry and ran for him, batting at the flames, extinguishing them. Clearly uncaring of the damage he'd sustained, he rasped. Clary, I need you. Naomi swallowed, looking part apprehensive, part excited. Of course, mon coeur. He yanked her into his arms, planting his fangs into her neck. Then they disappeared. Wait, no, Carol cried. Where'd he go? I need him to get back. Get back, Mari said. What are you talking about? I barely got you out. Quo, he's in trouble. Tears streamed down Ruby's face. We need to help Malcolm. Who's Malcolm, Ruby? Mari asked. And what's on your necks? Carol, what's on your sword? Brown Wendigo blood covered it. There's no time to explain. Where will the vampire go? We have to find him. Mari shook her head. Conrad's a special kind of loopy. He won't be right from that for days. To Ruby, she said, Hey, kiddo, why don't you go with Eliana and get washed up? Eliana hurried over, but Ruby flung herself away. I want to go after Malcolm. Her breaths were shallowing. The girl was hysterical. Caro was nearly there. She dropped her sword, crouching to grab Ruby's shoulders. You know how I came back for you twice? I will find Malcolm, I swear to you. I'll bring him home. Come, sweet, Eliana said, reaching for her. Ruby's face had gone red, her chest heaving, eyes shimmering. She was about to pass out again. I want him back now! Her shriek was ear-splitting. Now, now, now! There, child, Eliana murmured, laying her hand on Ruby's forehead. At once, the girl fell unconscious, and the old witch swooped her up into her arms. A little mystical Benadryl never hurt anyone, she said, heading upstairs. Over her shoulder, she added, Ruby will wake in a couple of hours. I suggest you retrieve whoever it is that she wants by then. Caro surveyed the faces in the room, seeing more witches. Nymphs, some of the noble Fae, Valkyrie, Lyke, and more. Then she spotted King Rydstrom and his fellow demons. He could trace. Rydstrom, I need you to trace me back to the island, right back to where I was. Mari said, Caro, I can only direct Rydstrom to the island, and that's if he can follow some really vague directions. I can't get him exactly back to your location. Apparently, it took Conrad more than three hours to reach you from where I'd sent him. Even with Caro's limited knowledge of the island, she couldn't outpace a tracing vampire. More than three hours to get to Malcolm? Have to get started now. Mari, pull up the directions. Rydstrom is tracing me, and get this thing off my neck. 
Rydstrom's sorceress queen Sabine demanded, Is Lanthi there? Yes, Caro answered. Somewhere. At Rydstrom's quizzical look, she hastily explained. We got separated. I'm sure we can find her within a day or so, if we leave right now. Turning to Maraquetta, she snapped, Mari, my collar. I need it gone. It's binding my powers. I'm on it, Mari said, rubbing her thumb over a pocket mirror while studiously gazing away. Damn, Carol, that is some serious mojo. Rydstrom crossed his brawny arms over his chest. So if you weren't just with Lanthi, then you can't say for certain that she's even still on this island. No time to convince him to explain Thronos. Caro couldn't catch her breath, feeling as if she were about to hyperventilate like Ruby. We'll go in when Mariketta scries for her specifically, Rydstrom decided. It will ultimately save us time. Typical logical Rydstrom. No, damn you, now! If anything happened to Malcolm, she clutched at her chest, thinking about Malcolm in the midst of all those creatures. We're leaving this fucking minute! Sabine shot to her feet, her anger making the room appear to rock. You didn't just talk to my husband like that. I did, and you'll get him to cooperate if you ever want to see your sister again. Now you're threatening me? Sabine narrowed her eyes behind her mask. I'll turn your mind inside out. She held up her glowing palms, poised to strike. You think Mari didn't bind any mystical offensives within our coven? A quick glance at Mari. You did, right, Glitch? Wide-eyed, Mari nodded. Between that and your new collar, the best you can do is catfight. Thank you.